Well, welcome to the house of the Lord, saints of God. Someone take this. We glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Welcome to World Harvest Church. And we are in the month of June. And we are in our series, Living My Blessed Life. Do I have a church in the house? Somebody that has something that God prays and thanks for. I want you to declare, I am living my blessed life. I'm living my blessed life. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to come to the headquarters on a Saturday just to give God praise, to glorify His name, to fellowship with the saints of God. Hallelujah. Blessings and welcome to our global church family, all of our pastors and ministers that are online that couldn't make it today because of all the rains. Blessings and welcome. Somebody say welcome. Welcome. So that's a hearty welcome from the saints of God in the sanctuary today. Blessings to all of our houses of prayer, leaders, all of our friends and prayer partners. We send you tons of love, tons of blessings prosperity is coming into your home today as you connect to the altar at World Harvest Prayer Tower. Blessings to our International USA Prayer Ambassador, Louisiana House of Prayer Minister Parisia. You are welcome. Blessings to Abdiel, blessings to Brittany, and all of your friends at Louisiana. We say shalom and welcome. Amen. So today I'm going to be talking in our series, Living My Blessed Life. And today, my topic is, It Shall Not Come Near Thee. So, that is taken from Psalms chapter 91. It's so important as we live our blessed, our blessed life that we remember Part of our blessing is divine protection. Someone say that. Part of my blessing is divine protection. Divine protection. Divine protection. So I want to give you that portion of scripture from Psalms 91. Where we talk about the protection of the Lord. Psalms 91, you're reading verse 7 to 11. When our found say amen. Amen. Psalms 91, we're reading from verse 7 to 11. 2, 3, read. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right, right hand, but it shall not, not come, come near thee. thee. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold and see. Mm -hmm. The reward of the wicked. Uh -huh. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Amen. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Amen. As a spirit-filled believer, there are many blessings that we get to enjoy as part of God's covenant. One of those blessings is divine protection. Somebody say divine protection. We are divinely covered and protected by the blood of Yeshua, the Holy Spirit, and the warring angels. Amen. The blood of Yeshua, the Holy Spirit, and the warring angels. How are you divinely protected, Mariah? The warring angels. Warring angels. What else? Luke, how are you protected? Holy Spirit. One more. Isaiah. How are you protected? He said the blood of Jesus. 
the blood of Jesus. So you have different, different dimensions of God's military defense system that covers you as a child of God. As a child of God, you are covered. Now everyone lift your right hand and say, Lord, I thank you that I'm a child of God. And I am divinely covered. By your blood, by, your blood, by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit and, by the warring angels. and by the warring angels. Amen. Amen. In today's world, there are many evil people out in society that are looking to do wickedness against good people. Has anyone ever met evil people in the world? In the supermarket, in the marketplace, running one about when you're driving your vehicle on the highway. Have you ever met the road bullies? Yes. What about you, Daniela? Ever met any mean people in school? Mean friends, mean teachers, mean people. They're everywhere. So in today's world, there are many evil people in society looking against good people. And the reason for this is because we are in a war. Anybody know what kind of war I'm talking about? Spiritual war. Kaylee, what type of war? Come up closer to the front here, Kaylee. Come up, up to Auntie Clary's side. Thank you. We are in a spiritual war. All the young people, I want you to say this. We are in a spiritual war. So then it tells us we are not really fighting earthly battles. It's earthly. It comes through human beings. But it's really principalities and powers. Rulers of darkness and high places. Spiritual is what we are fighting. Right? So we are in a war. You may say, well, Pastor, we don't live in Russia or Ukraine. We are not in a war. Yes, we are. It's a spiritual war. From the time you wake up in the morning, you are in a war. The warfare has begun since midnight at that night before when you were sleeping. The began. The warfare doesn't begin when you wake up. It begins midnight in the witching hours when the witches are flying, when the warlocks are moving through the atmosphere, when evil people are visiting cemeteries to cast their spells and cast their charms over entire cities and regions. We are in a war. You may be but the witches and the warlocks are not sleeping. They are releasing spells over entire cities, entire villages, entire regions. And that's why we got to thank God for the midnight intercessors. We got to thank God for the watchmen. The watchmen that are on the walls praying. Husbands, you got to thank God for your praying wife. If you have a praying wife, you are blessed. Because she is You see, every house must have a watchman. It is imperative for every house to have a watchman in this last days. So we're living the blessed life. And I'm telling you now why we are blessed. We're blessed because I'm a watchman of my house. When
Yeshua. You will not be denied. You will not be denied. We are in a war. And this is a spiritual war. It is darkness fighting against light. Evil fighting against good. Satan fighting against God. It is a spiritual battle. And if you are a child of God, you belong to the kingdom of light. You belong to God's army. You belong to God's army. Someone say, I belong to God's army. Now, if you belong to God's army, young people, you have to use the weapons of warfare. You have to use the weapons that are available for the child of God to fight and win. You got to use the weapons. Some of you young people, you put down your weapons and the enemy is coming up against you and you are wondering why you are feeling defeated. You put down your weapons, but today in this service you are going to pick it back up again. You're going to pick it back up again.
You can be all right and you want. Some people call themselves Christian and they're walking around like a leaf. Every wind blow, trembling, trembling. They're frightened. They're afraid of the witch, afraid of the water, afraid of this one. If someone sings too hard next to them, they're trembling, they're frightened, they're nervous. What kind of covenant is that? If I cannot come out in my nation and walk the words of God without fear. Jesus. 
It is destroyed and dismantled. Yes. So you have power and authority as a child of God yes. to live in this earth without fear. The only man you're supposed to fear is God the Father himself. You have respect and reverence and honor for your leaders and all of that. But the fear that you're supposed to have is for God. The fear for God. People in the world turn it around. They fear man and dishonor God. But that's not the way it's supposed to be. You fear God. Fear God and keep his commandments. Amen. So it does not matter what is happening in the world. It will not come near you. I want you to write that down. It does not matter what is happening in the world. It will not come near you. Amen. Shooting will not
They say, girl, you're not afraid to go here, or you're not afraid to go there to house a prayer or whatever. Say, a thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right side, but it will not come near me. It will not come near me. That's your response, Diane. That's your response. You got to have the right response. And that response is the word of God. Psalms 91 and 7. That is the word. You give them the word. When you give the enemy the word, you silence his power. You subdue his power. You dismantle his power. You disarm his power. When you give the devil that word, you disarm him. You disarm him. You disarm him. You subdue him. And you break the neck of that evil spoiler. You spoil the spoiler. You got to spoil the spoiler with the word of God. We live right here in this beautiful Caribbean island, Trinidad and Tobago. And some people are afraid to pray for their nation. They're afraid to bless the land. They're afraid to say, I love TNT. And they live right here. So everyone evil except you. But you're living in a bubble. You're living in a bubble because in the whole you, you should be God. You should be God. You should be up next to the right hand of the Father interceding for the world. You are living in a nation, Trinidad and Tobago, and some of my friends, you are living abroad. Pray for your nation. Love your nation. Pray for your people. Become a nation builder, not a nation destroyer. You cannot be a nation destroyer and then you want the best for your children go to school. You want the best, you want the benefits, you want the perks, you want to do all sorts of things in the, in the nation but you hate Trinidad and Tobago. You hate the people in the nation. You should be next to God True. and just sitting as Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pray for your nation. Pray for the people. Love the people. We are nation builders around here. We are nation builders. We build and we repair family prayer altars. There are many things we do not like that's happening in the nation, in government, parliament, and all of that, in different sectors of society. But as an intercessor, it is my duty to pray for the peace of the land, that I may dwell peacefully in the land. That's the word of God. So let us pray for the nation, pray for the people. We are building Centers, prayer command towers in different parts of this nation so that we can shine our light into the rural areas, into the far places, so that people can come and receive prayer, receive deliverance, receive a word, just receive hope. We have to extend our hands of hope into our nation while time remains. We have to extend mercy and grace so people can come before the king comes. Did you, did you ever notice that right now in the earth, in Trinidad and probably your nation, everything is very easily accessible now. It's easy to get things gross. In the supermarkets, there's a lot of sales going on with food supplies. Things are easily accessible right now. You call that an excess of grace. There's an excess of grace. That excess of grace or that overflow of grace, it is God's love to humanity, helping the people of the world to get ready, to show someone the love of God, to show a family member the love of God. God is helping us to win the loss at any cost, to show people his grace, his love, and his mercy, to bring them in while time remains. So I really want us to stop wishing we were living somewhere else. True. Let us stop doing that. Write that down. Is Melissa Parisia online? Are you seeing Melissa Parisia? Melissa Parisia, are you online? Write down. Stop wishing you were living somewhere else. Now, of course, Melissa Parisia, we already put your name in the um, books for Trinidad and Tobago, right? <laughs> so, that one does not apply to you. <laughs> Because you have to come to Trinidad, you and your family. 
all right? But really, seriously, if you are an intercessor and you are a homeowner and the Lord has placed you in a village or a community and you own that house, God has placed you there for a reason as a child of God. You've got to pray for your community. You have to pray for your community. Those of you that are not homeowners as yet, God is redirecting and shifting. I brought that prophetic word two weeks ago that the Lord is shifting for the lifting. So there are some of you, the Lord is going to relocate you to plant you in another city, in another state, some of you in another nation so that you can build and uh, flourish and own your houses and own your homestead and all of that. But those of you that are homeowners, love uh, your land, love your village, love your region. Let me tell you something. God didn't have to send you to this earth as a human being. He could have sent you as a dog. He could have sent you as a butterfly. He could have made you a rhinoceros. He could have just made you into some animal or something. But he sent you here. Yeah. Diane, really laughing. He sent you here as a human being to have a human experience. And he, he put you in the land of the living. I'm so blessed I'm in the land of the living. It feels so good to be alive, baby. I'm alive and I'm in the land of the living. I'm living my blessed life right here in the Caribbean, in the Caribbean islands of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm blessed. So I'm blessed. I said I'm blessed. Will ever be able to prosper. 
No weapon. There was something I saw, a video that I saw, and it was demonstrating the supernatural power of angels. That there was this family home, it was a Christian home, and the family home had a mom, and the mom was a praying mommy, praying woman. And she would pray every day, pray every day, and to cover the whole house with the blood of Jesus, and she's always praying, always praying. And in that video, it showed that when she prayed, a fire, an invisible fire would fill the house. And that fire went, went floating from where she was praying in her room throughout the house. And that fire went into the children's room and was covering the children. Unknown to them, their room was filled with fire. The living room was filled with fire. The front door was filled with fire. The back door was filled with fire. There was fire everywhere while that mommy was praying. And the next day in the video, it's just a quick short five minutes video. When the children get up and they leave to go to school, fire was all on the children. They're going to school and fire, that liquid fire was on them. And they're walking to school in their school uniform and they did not know fire was all around. And the demons were just watching them and backing away. Watching them and backing away. They could not touch the children of the righteous. It will I'm moving. 
It's a great thing to be a spirit filled believer. It's a great thing to belong to the army of God. I'm not in darkness, I'm in the light. I'm born in the armor of light. I will continue to sound the alarm that Jesus Christ is Lord. I will continue to sound the alarm that the King is coming. The King is coming. The King is coming. The King is coming. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to the Lamb. The Lamb that has been slain before the foundations of the earth. The King is coming.
Kasata. Father, we seal this property with the blood of the Messiah. We seal this house with the blood of the Messiah, the four corners of this property. We bind and we arrest any heavy spirit, any flying spirit, anything that the enemy said. We bind and we arrest it by fire in the mighty name of our Lord Yeshua. And we release the fire of the Holy Spirit all around this property, all on top of the building, on the front doors, the front property in the car park, all around this property. We release the fire of the Lord, the fire of the Lord. We sanctify this house to the glory of God. We sanctify this headquarters with the fire of God and the blood of Jesus Christ. And we seal it for the glory of God. And we decree and declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I sanctify your house right now. I release the fire of God at the front door, the back door, the front gates, your bedroom, your living rooms, your offices, your pantry. I release the fire of God all throughout your house, the fire of God all throughout your property, the fire of God all on top of your building. I release the fire of God. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit be released all around.
violence trying and women fervently trying to come against her, come against this body. We come against it, we bind them in the strike and pass it out in Jesus' name. And we put healing, strength, upliftment, encouragement. You will rise on eagles' wings. You will rise on eagles' wings in Jesus' name. We 
fresh fire, a fresh oil, a fresh grace upon your life to fight, to fight in the spirit, to war in the spirit, and put that anointing on your life to wage war against the devil's war. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will rise. You will rise in spirit. The Lord says you're called to be a spiritual person, and you're going to rise in spirituality. I see a breaking off like an outer shell breaking off. It was like a worldly shell, and that worldly shell has a drop. A mantle will come on you, but the worldly shell has to fall so that man, that new mantle will come. And the minute that that new mantle rests upon you, you will begin to preach the gospel. So I place that anointing upon your life to speak the word of God.